Right now, an object of completely unknown origin is passing through our solar system. An absolutely massive, silent visitor that raises far more questions than answers today. I'm obviously talking about that mysterious object known as 3i Atlas. An object over 30 kilometers in diameter speeding through our cosmic neighborhood. The official version is that it's a comet. Except that a series of really strange clues is starting to paint a much more disturbing picture. Welcome everyone to UFO Section 51. I'm Dose Geek and you're back on the channel dedicated to ufology and the paranormal on YouTube. This French channel where we talk about UFOs every week and cover some really interesting topics. Before we get started, thanks again for liking this video, sharing it as much as possible, and subscribing to the channel if you're new here and want to join the UFO Section 51 community. Thanks also once again for all your comments and all your feedback, which are always very kind and very interesting on every video posted on the channel. Thank you for your support. I know, I repeat myself a lot, but all these little technical things like likes, shares, all that, are really important to help boost the channel's visibility on YouTube. Because the YouTube algorithm, or the YouTube bot, call it whatever you want, is very fickle and also really hungry for all those little actions that help push the video to the top of the list in terms of ranking on the platform. Every little action is always very useful and also very much appreciated. Just imagine for a moment, what if an answer, a reply to a message sent to the stars almost 50 years ago, had just arrived at our doorstep? That's kind of the wild scenario we're going to explore today as we take a look, or rather, take another look, at Free Eye Atlas. This cosmic object that, honestly, doesn't look like anything else we know. Remember, I already made a video on this topic. By the way, I invite you to scroll a bit further up in the video history if you want to check out that video dedicated to 3i Atlas. Back then, we were still at the very beginning of this fascinating story, but today, we've got even more new stuff. New developments are coming in every week. But to really understand the theory we're talking about today, we need to take a little trip back in time. It's August 15, 1977, at exactly 11.16 p.m. A radio telescope is listening to the universe. And then, for 72 seconds, it picks up a signal, a signal so powerful, so clear, that it doesn't resemble anything we've ever known. The astronomer who discovers this is so blown away that he circles the sequence on the paper and writes a word right next to it. Wow. And ever since that famous signal, the wow signal, it's kind of the holy grail for astronomers, a complete mystery. A few days later, there's the Voyager Golden Record, a kind of interstellar message in a bottle, which is sent into space aboard the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes in August and September 1977. The project, overseen by Carl Sagan, was essentially a message from humanity to potential extraterrestrial civilizations, containing, among other things, sounds and music from Earth, greetings in 55 languages, images representing human life and culture, as well as coordinates to help locate our planet in the universe. I don't know if, in hindsight, that will turn out to have been a good idea. Time will tell. After that, nothing more. Radio silence for almost half a century. But now, a cosmic visitor is on its way. And the crazy thing is, it's coming from exactly the same area in the universe where the WOW signal originated. So, the questions are, is this just an absolutely incredible coincidence? Or is this the answer to the WOW signal? Or maybe even a response to the Voyager Golden Record, assuming the Voyager probes managed to send their message that far into space. So just imagine a reply that took 50 years to cross space to reach us. This visitor has a name, of course, Free Eye Atlas. Free Eye, because it's the third one. This detail is super important, because it means it's the third interstellar object. Basically, it's only the third object we've been able to confirm as coming from another star system and entering our own solar system. First, we had Oumuamua in 2017, then Borisov in 2019. But get ready, because 3i Atlas is shaping up to be even weirder. And this is where things get really, really fascinating. Because 3i Atlas isn't coming from just anywhere. No, its trajectory points straight toward the constellation Sagittarius, the same part of the sky where the WOW signal came from in 1977. Fascinating. Fascinating. 
It's such a huge coincidence, so unlikely, that we really have to wonder about it. Hold on, because this trajectory coincidence is just the beginning of the weirdness. The more scientists point their telescopes at 3i slash Atlas, the less the simplest explanation that it's just a weird comet seems to hold up. In fact, the strange clues just keep piling up. First of all, there's its size. We're talking about a minimum mass of 33 billion tons. And that's just colossal. To give you an idea, that's at least a hundred thousand times more massive than the two other interstellar visitors we've seen before, Oumuamua and Borisov. It's a true cosmic monster. And that creates a huge problem for scientists. They call it the size paradox. In fact, according to all the simulations, we should have seen thousands, even tens of thousands, of small interstellar rocks before coming across a giant like this. It's a bit like going fishing for the first time and catching a blue whale before even seeing a single little minnow. Statistically, it's really, really strange. September 2024, the James Webb Space Telescope detected a huge object some 10 light years from Earth, and we're on its trajectory. What if our past held the key to our future? For millennia, ancient tales have spoken of the Anunnaki, mysterious beings who shaped humanity before disappearing. An unknown object, regularly changing trajectory and seemingly heading inexorably towards Earth, and some believe it heralds their return. Are they the Anunnaki or a completely different extraterrestrial race? Will they come as enlightened guides or ruthless conquerors? Through a fascinating analysis blending mythology, science and ufology. This book explores the possible scenarios of an imminent contact that could turn our destiny upside down. Are you ready for first contact? Then, there's its trajectory, which is just as unlikely. Normally, a visitor from another solar system would arrive pretty much at random, not necessarily aligned with the same plane as our planets. But not this one. 3i Atlas arrives exactly in the same plane as the planets in our solar system. That's what we call the ecliptic plane. It's kind of like the orbital highway of the solar system. To sum up, its trajectory is strangely perfectly aligned with the planets of our solar system, as if it planned to visit certain planets in our solar system one after another. The probability of that happening purely by chance is really tiny. One in 500. It's like trying to throw a ball blindfolded from the back of a stadium and having it land right in the center of a target. It's an incredible level of precision. Third, there's the chemical composition of 3i Atlas. That's yet another puzzle. 3i Atlas is made up of 95% carbon dioxide, which is already pretty rare. But the real thing that's making all the scientists scratch their heads is that it contains nickel, but no iron. But in the universe, nickel and iron are like two peas in a pod. They're almost always found together. The only place where you find pure nickel, at least on Earth, is when it comes out of our factories. It's generally an industrial product. And finally, there's the most obvious anomaly, the most visual one, that strange glow emitted by 3i Atlas. The light it emits is five times stronger than what has been recorded so far with other comets. For some, this extreme brightness wouldn't be of natural origin, but rather the result of a controlled release of carbon dioxide. Supporters of this theory suggest that it could therefore be a sophisticated propulsion system. What's more, usually, a comet has a trailing tail. This tail is always pushed away from the sun by the solar wind. That's the basic rule. But the glow from Troy Avlis, on the other hand, points forward, straight toward the sun. It just doesn't make any sense. It defies the laws of physics as we understand them. With all that, we come to the million dollar question. Is it a comet or something else? Is it just an incredibly weird natural phenomenon, or is it technology? That's the big debate stirring up the scientific community. One name that stands out right now is Avi Loeb, a Harvard astrophysicist who doesn't hesitate to put the technological hypothesis on the table. In fact, to try to bring some order to all this, Avi Loeb invented a tool, the Loeb scale. It's really simple, it goes from 0 to 10. 0 means it's definitely natural, like a rock or a typical comet. And 10 means it's definitely technological, for example a probe or an extraterrestrial spacecraft. Basically, something that's been made. So, where does Troy Atlas land on his scale? Avi Loeb gives it a score of 4 out of 10. Careful, a 4 isn't proof, not even close. It means that, for him, there are so many and such significant anomalies that you can't just brush off the idea anymore. We're just below 
50% means the technological hypothesis is being taken very, very seriously. And for Avi Loeb, the key point is really this story about nickel without iron. He says it himself, the only way to get that is usually through the industrial production of nickel alloy. If we get more data and it looks as if it's technological, then obviously the ranking will go up. If it maneuvers, for example, or uh, emits a, a radio signal, or we see some artificial lights coming from it, or it looks strange because it's <clears throat> it came uh, very close to um, Mars yes, uh, two days ago, and there are seven um, uh, orbiters around Mars that um, could have taken data and we haven't seen it. it was not public yet the only images we've seen so far pre very preliminary are from the perseverance rover um, so there are seven uh, different orbiters um, uh, one from uh, nasa the the mars reconnaissance orbiter that has a camera called high rise that can take um, an image with a pixel resolution of 30 kilometers so we will know much more from that image because the brightest pixel will constrain the area of 3i atlas and and then there are european um, several european uh, orbiters that could take a spectrum an image and there is one uh, chinese uh, orbiter and one uh, from the uae uh, another orbiter so altogether seven of them and i really look forward to to seeing that data when it comes out it's not public yet there was a question of whether we should the uh, message or intercept three atlas and that of course depends on the details and I um, one thing I uh, recommended in a paper um, a month ago that was already published uh, is that uh, we use uh, the Juno spacecraft near Jupiter to observe it it could have almost intercepted it if it had all the fuel that it started with but because it's used most of the fuel it, it could only get a little closer than uh, than it currently is but at, at any event the representative Luna uh, called me on the phone for an update about 3i Atlas and I mentioned this paper to her and she wrote a letter, uh, official letter from the US Congress to, to the administrator, interim administrator of NASA, Sean Duffy, that you can see on the left here, that encouraged NASA to use the Juno mission. And as far as I know, they didn't plunge it into Jupiter. It was supposed to die um, uh, in September, uh, a month a month ago. Uh, so I hope they will keep using it to observe 3i Atlas. So when you add that to everything else, the size, the trajectory, the glow, well, the idea that it was just a simple comet gets harder and harder to defend. There are just too many unanswered questions. Naturally, with a mystery like this, the internet goes wild. All sorts of theories start popping up. Some say that the official photos were doctored to add a comet tail. There's even a rumor about a secret NASA memo that supposedly leaked, describing the object making course corrections. Another persistent rumor claims that a live NASA video feed was suddenly cut off. Witnesses claimed that during the live feed, just before it was cut, they saw something that was anything but natural, specifically, a perfectly straight edge on the object, with an almost metallic outline. Since then, the recording of that live broadcast has, conveniently enough, disappeared. Other theories, and let me be clear, these are absolutely unproven, draw a connection between these interstellar visitors and cave paintings that are several thousand years old. These ancient drawings supposedly depict Oumuamua and 3i Atlas in a very strange and precise way. But who's to say these aren't just AI-generated photos? Let's be clear, for now, all of this is just rumors. Nothing has been verified, but it shows just how fascinating this topic is. Yet, the scientific recordings we mentioned suggest something supernatural. Fortunately, we're not going to stay in the dark and keep speculating forever. The scientific investigation is ongoing and, more importantly, we're approaching key dates, crucial moments when we'll be able to get much more precise data to finally try to understand. Make sure to note these dates. October 2025 is going to be the moment of truth. The object will pass close to Mars, and that's when the orbiting probes will be able to take ultra-high resolution photos. Right after that, at the end of October, it will skim past the Sun. That's the perihelion. 
the heat will be extreme. If it's a comet, it could break apart. On the other hand, if it's something else, it won't break up. We'll then see how the object reacts. And then, there will be one last chance in March 2026, when it should pass near Jupiter. There's just one little snag that complicates things a bit, earthly politics. Yes, in fact, the infamous US government shutdown falls right during this crucial observation window, around March 2026. As a result, there's a lot of uncertainty about NASA's ability to collect all the data. An unfortunate coincidence, or maybe just a little too convenient an excuse to limit access to the data. Who knows? Only time will tell, maybe. But fortunately, NASA isn't the only one working on this project. In fact, the European Space Agency is also on a case and shouldn't take its eyes off the object. In the end, we're left with a fundamental question. Is 3i Atlas just a cosmic coincidence, an absolutely monumental one? Are we dealing with some kind of natural strangeness jackpot? Or is it something else? Maybe a deliberate response, an extraterrestrial artifact sent 50 years ago that's finally arriving at its destination. Whatever the answer is, it could very well change our view of the universe and our place in it. The date is set for the coming weeks. This was Dose Geek on UFO, section 51. Thank you for sticking around until the end of this video. Thank you for listening to me. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below the video. I'll be happy to read them all. We'll see each other again very soon in a new video on the UFO, section 51 channel. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the sky, stay vigilant, stay tuned to UFO news, and I'll see you in an upcoming video on UFO, section 51. Longue vie et prospérité. Taking flight